Hey everybody, welcome back to another episode of Bait.com's Career Talk. I'm Hatem Hanoun, and on this week's episode, I want to share with you 16 lessons that I've learned through applying and looking for jobs, and now working with Bait.com and working closely with job seekers across the region. So here are 16 lessons that I wish I knew when I was looking for that first job, and I'm hoping they would help you in your search for your first. Number one, more is not always better. What I mean by this is a lot of people think that the more information and details they put in their CV, the more impressive it'll look. The thing is, the more information you put, the harder it makes it for the employer to find the information they're looking for and increases their chances of just ignoring your application altogether. Number two, relevancy is key. Relating back to the first point, you don't want to be sending out your CV to everyone. Make sure you know what your CV is about and the types of jobs you're applying to that match your qualifications as best as possible. This saves the employer time and more importantly saves your time so you can focus on the jobs that really mean something to you and really fit your qualifications and experience. Number three, research is underrated. Now we say this often, a lot of job seekers ignore it, but you should be researching the country, company, position, and industry of the places that you're applying to. This will help make your CV a lot stronger and make the interview process for you a lot more impressive when they surprise you with that phone call or ask you to come in. Number four, optional isn't really optional. A lot of the times when you come to apply to a job, it will ask you if you want to attach a cover letter or a questionnaire will pop up for you to answer or they'll ask for recommendations. Things that may seem optional and a lot of job seekers just skip over these things. But you have to remember that the employers put them there for a reason. They want to know certain things about you. And the more information you give them up front, the more likely they are to give you a call. Number five, generic cover letters are silly. Now a lot of times a, a job seeker will write a cover letter and just send out the same cover letter to every company they apply to. This does very little for the employer and employers and recruiters will be able to immediately tell if this cover letter has been recycled over and again and sent out to everyone. It's almost better if you don't send a cover letter at all than to send one of these generic template ones that you send out to everyone. For the companies that you do really care about, spend some time writing a detailed or rather a tailored cover letter specifically for them. Number six. Typos are very rarely tolerated. Now, if you're sending your CV or application to a recruiter, that's the only piece of information they have about you, and it's in written form. So any typos or mistakes that you have, and it sends a bad signal to the recruiter about the attention to detail that you have. If you don't care that much about your CV that you're leaving typos and mistakes in it, it tells them a whole lot about what could potentially happen if you were to come into the job, and recruiters won't overlook this fact. So make sure you proofread multiple times, review your application before sending it across. Number seven. It's not all about you. Now it's easy to get carried away, whether on your CV or in the interview, talking on and on about yourself and your aspirations and ambitions and how taking this job will help you grow and learn and do wonderful things. But at the end of the day, the employer wants to know how you can add value to them. So make sure the whole conversation, whether in written form on your CV or in the interview, is focused on the employer and what skills and qualifications you have that will help them achieve their goals. Number eight, don't tell, show. What I mean by this is a lot of people will just make claims on their CV. You being a great leader, a great team player, a great communicator, very effective, efficient, so on and so forth. But what you want to do on your CV is try to prove some of these claims, whether through your experiences or your skills or any projects you've done at university. Every claim you make, try to back it up somewhere on your CV so they see some sort of proof of your claims. Number nine, practice makes perfect, especially for the interview. I know it does get tempting sometimes to just wing the interview or improvise on the spot and trust your communication skills, but why take that risk? Practice in front of a mirror or with a friend. Number 10, questions are smart. It's fantastic if you're able to answer all the questions that an interviewer throws at you, but at the same time, don't be hesitant or shy to ask your own questions. It shows the employer that you're really determined, that you're passionate, that you're really interested and invested in the vacant position and shows that you've done some research. So understand what the company's about, prepare some questions so that you can learn more about the company and the recruiter and the position you're applying for in the interview. Number 11, money comes last. Don't ever bring up the salary question too early. And by too early, I mean before the company or the recruiter has given you at least a verbal offer. That's when you can start talking about your compensation package and what you can get in return. Along the way, you should be focused on what value you can give the recruiter and the company. At the same time, maybe what you can gain from that experience in terms of learning or growth. But in terms of money, don't bring it up too early until they've given you an offer. Otherwise, it could send the wrong signal to the employer. Number 12, don't waste your time waiting. Now, when you apply to a job, I know this may sound harsh, but assume that you've been rejected. This will save you some time sitting and waiting for that phone call or your eyes glued to the screen waiting for that email response from the company. 
Assume you've been rejected, get ready, prepare your next CV and continue applying. When you get the response, you respond to it accordingly, but you wouldn't have wasted time along the way applying to other opportunities in the market. Number 13, not getting a response is not a dead end. If you haven't heard back from an employer, sure, don't get too hung up on it and wait for their response. But at the same time, if you're really keen about that position, find the recruiters through social media or otherwise, or through the email and follow up with them. You really have nothing to lose. Number 14, it's never too early to apply. And I see this happening a lot with students that they wait until the final moment when they graduate at the time when they want a job to start researching and applying. Truth is, recruitment is a lengthy process. Finding a job does take some time. So especially if you're a student, start looking, researching, searching and applying to jobs in your final semester before graduation. If you're a current employee or a job seeker, start ahead of time. Don't wait for the moment where you want a job right now to start looking and applying for jobs. Number 15, always be on alert mode. What this means is even if you're not actively applying to opportunities, make sure your CV is always updated. Make sure your social media presence is strong because you never know when jobs may come your way. A lot of employers on bait.com contact job seekers directly for unadvertised positions. Number 16, break the rules. Sometimes you need to think really creatively to stand out from the competition. So aside from sending your regular CV, think about what else you can do to really get the recruiter's attention. For example, if you're an engineer and you want to talk about some of the projects that you've done, and these projects involve or include a lot of numbers and materials, rather than talk about them in a paragraph or in a list that may come across as boring, maybe you want to think about putting that in an attractive infographic, something that's visually appealing and gets their attention immediately. It lets them know that a, you really want the job, you've put in that kind of effort and makes them understand that you are creative, you think out of the box, maybe have some problem solving, creative skills definitely. So think of ways that you can stand out from the competition by breaking the rules. Thank you very much for watching this video. I hope you learned a thing or two that'll help you improve your employability. And as always, subscribe to our channel here for the latest weekly videos. Follow us on Facebook and Instagram as well. And I'll see you next week.